I guarantee you've never seen anything quite like this before. It's called the BRX Hunter. And the best way to think of it is part world rally car, part tank. Are you ready? Let there be light. What we have here is a two-ton four-wheel drive off-roader that can go 100 miles an hour across pretty much anything in front of it. I'm guessing this is a bit bigger than you expected. So you might be wondering what it's for. Well, it's clearly a tough truck, so it's going to do the toughest race on the planet, the Dakar. A three week long, 10,000 kilometer epic across mountains, deserts, dunes, rocks, and anything else the organizers can find to punish the car or the crew inside it. It's been built by motorsport specialist ProDrive. And when the race starts in Saudi Arabia in January, COVID fingers crossed, one of its drivers will be Sebastian Loeb. Yeah, nine times world rally champion, Sebastian Loeb. He's fairly handy behind the wheel, so it's safe to say it's unlikely this is gonna be tugging around at the back of the pack. Wild looking thing, isn't it? And that's something that's actually encouraged by the regulations, because if you look at a Formula One car, the technical documentation for that is 160 pages long. For this, the cross-country class, just 16 pages. That's it. And actually, half of it's in French, so it's maybe only half of that. What it basically says is, have a crack, see how you get on, try something different. And this is different. As ProDrive isn't linked to an existing brand, it didn't need to look like a road car. But if you're thinking the shape and angle of that rear deck looks familiar, maybe a bit Jaguar-esque, that's because this has been done by Jaguar's ex-head of design, Ian Callum, the man behind the F-Type, the I-Pace and the crazy CX-75 concept car. Welcome to the hardest working bit of the car. Now you regularly see these things several metres in the air. And you'd imagine that when they fall down, they'd have loads of lovely suspension travel to catch them. But no, actually, it's about that much. A WRC car has more wheel travel than that. So they've got massive double wishbone suspension and huge Riga twin dampers in there to cope. But these are not light wheels. They're 13 kilos each, and the tyres are another 25 kilos. You also need to be able to carry at least two spares, and they live under here. Now, if you're anything like me, when I first saw pictures of the car, I assumed this was an intake. But no, you can sort of see from the shape that it's a spare wheel carried nice and low for the center of gravity and one on either side. And also the option of carrying a third one under here. You're not allowed to come any closer because what happens under here apparently is top secret. However, watch this. It's um mostly just empty space. I can't see what all the fuss is about. Right, up top, rear wing. Not for downforce apparently, but only for high speed stability. However, it does have one amazing party trick. If the car were to end up upside down in the desert, they can use the rear wing as a lever to turn it back over. No, no they can't, that's a lie. Time to talk about the engine which, it turns out, isn't under here. I thought it was initially, or I just assumed it was, but no, and nor is it under the stubby bonnet up front. In fact, it's almost entirely underneath the windscreen in here. It's a familiar engine, though. It's Ford's three and a half litre twin turbo V6 EcoBoost engine that you've seen in the F-150 pickup and the GT supercar, amongst other things, and it develops around 400 horsepower and 500 pounds foot of torque here. The interesting thing though, is that this is the first time they've allowed a turbo petrol car into Dakar. Until now, you've either had to have a turbo diesel or a natural aspirated petrol. So what they've said is that, so this doesn't have too much of an advantage, it has to mimic the power curve of a naturally aspirated V8. Go figure. Time to go and have a look inside. Look. Aston Martin door handle. Look, another Aston door handle in here. But very kindly, they've recessed the um, exhaust back under the side here so that Seb doesn't burn his legs when he's getting in and out. Now, getting in. Uh, right, um, that's solid, that's solid, that's solid. Right, foot, leg, leg, shuffle. 
down. We're in. Ooh. Right. Very high side here, and I'm guessing just an engine just in here somewhere. Speaking of which, ProDrive is very happy with the packaging they've achieved, getting all the heaviest bits as sort of central and low down in the car as they can. And the other thing they're really happy about is being able to see out, because it's really important in the desert to see what's the other side of the dune or what you're about to crash into or land on. In fact, as the chief engineer put it, he said, think of it like a plane. It's important you have good visibility while you're in the air. I kid you not. But it's actually quite a mechanical and relatively simple car to operate once you're inside. You're not even allowed to have paddle shifts behind the steering wheel. I've got a clutch in the footwell and it helps you operate the um, big six-speed sequential manual here. Then you've got a lovely little hydraulic handbrake here. But the only other hydraulics you've got on the car are the built-in jacks underneath. It's snug in here and there's a lot of switches but you're not allowed any dynamic adjustments from the cockpit. If you want to adjust suspension or anti-roll bars, out you get. There are no active differentials or active suspension in the Hunter either. We've got a bank of switches here for the driver and some more over there for the co-driver. So the drivers will have got control of engine maps and lights and things. And over here, it looks like the co-driver's got control of the speed limiter. This is the central screen. You've got 500 litres of fuel and things. It can't be used as a sat-nav. No sat-nav in here. Instead, there is GPS on the car, but that is only to be used by the organisers for checking your speed, because it's 180 km an hour speed limit, which is about 112 miles an hour, and also for helping to come and find you if you stick it on its roof in the desert. On the Dakar, navigation is done the old way, with a roadbook and maps. For the first time this year, you can have a roadbook on a tablet. But listen, Mr Co-Driver, no Netflix or Candy Crush for you you need to help the driver get where he's going. So what's the plan after Dakar? Well, ProDrive has set up a new brand, BRX, to build the Hunter, and they think they'll be able to assemble about five a year, initially for customer racing. But beyond that, they think they might be able to have a role as a military application, as an FRV, that's a fast reconnaissance vehicle. Looking even further into the future, however, they think they might be able to turn it into an SRV, that's a school run vehicle. Yep, they really are talking about turning this into a road legal production car. We don't need to hear anymore. Sign us up now.